going on guys? It's Jordan Dion here and today I want to talk about some of the terms we frequently hear when securing a loan for a property. These include principal and interest, interest only, fixed, variable and an offset account. Obviously there's a whole bunch of other financial jargon that goes into a loan contract but these are the five main terms I commonly get asked about and although they may seem pretty straightforward on the surface, most don't actually know what's going on under the hood. Firstly, let's tackle principal and interest, also known as P and I. When you take out a loan to borrow money from a lender to pay for a house, you theoretically have to pay that money back and it comes at a cost also known as interest. So you can put the money you're paying back to pay off the loan into two separate categories. One is principal, which is the total amount that you borrowed, and two is interest, which is the money it costs to take out that loan. If you're on a principal and interest loan, this basically means you're paying both of these off simultaneously. A proportion of your repayments goes towards paying down your loan on the principal, and the remaining is charged as interest from your lender, and you You'll probably never see it again. Now that P and I is out of the way, interest only or IO for short is pretty self-explanatory. If you're on an interest only loan, essentially you're only making those interest portion repayments and not paying anything down on your loan. Obviously, the more of your loan that you pay down, the less interest you have to pay every repayment. So it makes sense to go P and I, right? Well, I think this is where most people's education level stops, and it gets presumed that P&I is the best way to go long term. We'll delve into why this way of thinking may even be harmful for your financial position long term at the end of this video. But before we do that, let's cover fixed versus variable. And if you're loving this content, don't forget to smash that like button. Fundamentally, there's this thing called the cash rate, and if you don't know what that is, you can just watch this video up here. But this cash rate impacts interest rates that lenders charge you to take out a loan. When the cash rate changes, so does interest rate. A variable loan is directly impacted by this because it's variable. It changes with the interest rate changes that your lender makes. And a locked in fixed loan doesn't get impacted because once you've locked in for a fixed period, generally one to five years, the interest rate doesn't get impacted because it's locked in. So essentially you're making a bet against the lender. If you think that interest rates are gonna to continue to come down, generally you'd wanna keep your loan on variable so you can take advantage of these interest rate drops. And vice versa, if you think that interest rates were gonna go up, you'd wanna lock in that lower rate. Again, this seems pretty straightforward on the surface, but under the bonnet there's other things going on too, such as currently fixed loan interest rates are lower than variable interest rates. And if you went variable over fixed, it would take multiple interest rate drops to see the same or a lower interest rate equivalent to that fixed loan rate. In addition, fixed loans in most cases have limited other features, such as an offset account. And herein lies the greatest gift that lenders have given all Australians. An offset account is a separate account that's linked to your loan. However, the funds that are in that account reduce the calculated loan amount. So if you had a $500,000 loan and $100,000 in an offset account, you'd only be paying interest on $400,000. So although you're not theoretically paying off your loan in the same way you would as a principal and interest loan, you're still reducing your repayments in the same way. The added benefit of using an offset account is you can still use that money freely. If a major event came up and you needed money handy, you could just take it out of that offset account without any complications. Where once you've paid down the loan in a P&I scenario, it's not as accessible without implication. To clarify my earlier statement that P&I may actually be harmful for your financial situation, I want to introduce you to the amortization schedule. For this example, we'll be demonstrating a $500,000 loan over a 30 year period on a 4% interest rate. As you can see, our total interest paid is pretty significant in comparison to the actual loan amount. Our calculated monthly repayment is $2,387. But let's see how this is broken up under the hood. 
As you can see, the interest proportion of this monthly repayment is much higher than that principal repayment. In the first month, we're paying $1,667 in interest compared to only $720 in principal. And it stays at this proportion for quite some time until eventually, slowly, this amount shifts over that 30 year loan period until much more is being paid in a principal amount compared to interest. So in the case where you had an offset account, you could put that same 2,387 monthly repayment into the offset and the equivalent proportions would work the same. However, say you could put $3,000 into that offset account every month then all of that additional $613 would go straight towards reducing your loan and have a much more dramatic impact on your next interest repayment. And if you didn't know it already, interest actually gets calculated daily. So say you got paid every week or fortnight and it went straight into that offset account. Well, you'd be reducing your interest by that full amount in the offset from the first night after it lands into your account, which in theory reduces your interest, meaning you're saving more money and the more money you save in that total offset account, the less interest you pay again and again and again. So it's essentially this snowball effect to pay down your loan. Now, I'm not a financial advisor or a mortgage broker, so please seek out your own professional financial, legal, taxation, and property investing advice for your current situation. These videos are just my opinion and are general in nature and should never be considered as personal advice. But for me personally, on my principal place of residence, my typical loan structure is an interest only variable loan with an offset account attached that I park all of my savings into, which reduces that total calculated loan amount. And one last little hidden gem, because I'm confident with my ability to control my spending, I use a 55 day credit card for all non-discretionary expenses. This allows me to pay for bills up front without money actually coming out of my account for another 55 days, leaving more money in my savings to reduce that calculated loan interest. And even better yet, my credit card automatically gets paid on time out of my offset account. I want to know what other things you guys use for your mortgage strategy and any other hidden gems that you might use. Leave it down in the comment section below. If you're keen for more content, make sure you subscribe and smash that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And until next time, happy house hunting.